You ever heard of Dark Souls? A game franchise full of questions. Who am I? Where am I? Why is this game so fucking hard? From the open awe to the downright creepy? Perfection in the art of world design. And a formula that passes the test of time. From Software has created a trilogy of masterpieces. Is what I would say if I didn't hate Dark Souls 2. I have a bone to pick with this game. You see, Dark Souls Remastered was my first experience with a Souls-like game. I died, and I died, and I got mad, but I persevered. After 36 hours of hardship, I killed Gwyn, got into New Game Plus, and proceeded to play another 30 hours getting every achievement and unlocking the infamous Dark Soul achievement. But then I played Dark Souls 2. And I could go into a rant about every single problem I have with this game, but a million other people have already done that job for me. But I still have a job to do. And since I don't want to farm Covenant items for the next 40 hours, I think it's time to put this game to bed once and for all. So, I got every achievement in Dark Souls 2. I started off by making my way over to the Handmaidens to create my character. What is your name? What is my name? We need a good name. Grass. My name's Grass. She hands me an effigy, and now it's time to create the man we'll be watching for the entirety of the game. Here he is. I hope you like him. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. Yeah, thanks for the warning. And just like that, we have our first achievement. One needless tutorial later, and we arrive at our homestead. Majula. In all seriousness, this has to be my favorite safe area in any Souls-like. The music, the scenery, and branching paths. Amazing. I have a very long conversation with the Crestfallen, who lets me join the Way of Blue, and I get my second achievement. I got Nessa Shard from the Well, walk to the Victor Stone to join the Fittest Covenant, third achievement by the way, and the Welcome Gesture from Saldan. That's what Jula done. Forest of Fallen Giants. Pushing through all the soldiers, I find myself fighting an enemy throwing firebombs at me. I knock him off the edge, and I try my hand at a plunge attack. Now does this kill me? It didn't even kill him. And yes, that's another achievement. Further into the area, I unlock the main bonfire. bonfire. I talk to the merchant, buy the blacksmith key, and return to Majula to level up and unlock the smith house. Amen. Returning to the forest, I walk upstairs and grab the small white soapstone. I convince a turtle knight to blow himself up, and I unlock the shortcut to make this run just a bit easier. That's one of many spells acquired. My name is Pate. And he's a dick. He tricks me into walking into a trap of a bunch of mobs, and I could just about deal with it and run back to confront him. He gives me the normal white soapstone, and I guess all's forgiven. I think at this point, I need to confess that I'm playing this in offline mode, and if you don't know how bad the netcode is in this game, I refer you to this clip. Yep, that's a no from me. One new shortcut unlocked, and down the elevator I go. Bye -bye. It's time to fight the first boss of this run, the Last Giant. Um. <sighs> wow, that's um, damage. Yeah, my weapons kind of suck. And I'll definitely need a new one after this boss. But after a very painful six minutes of hack and slash, I kill the giant and got the soldier key. Five achievements down. I use my newly earned souls to level up and buy a rod sword. Baby. I go back, but this time go down the off-beaten path to find a cartographer in a cave. I talk to him but I'll have to come back here once I've cleared out the basement in Majula. I open a previously closed door to reach the battlements. It's now time to fight a pursuer of humans. A powerful swordsman. A chariot of- Walk right. If you walk right, he can't hit you. Yep. Tip. Walk right. An eagle picks me up and flies me to the Lost Bastille. But I want to hold off before I tackle this place, so let's go back to Majula and level up. And, while we're here, let's open the door to the house and go down to the basement. With the skeleton dead, the cartographer should find his way to Majula now. I got an Essa shard and the soul vessel. Awesome! There's one more place I'd like to check out in the forest. Some casual robbery of turtlemen and a cocoa puff in the bed. I'm invaded by the first NPC of the playthrough. being invaded! Oh no! The fight goes as well as everything in DS2. What the fuck? Why do you do so much damage? Come this way. He just killed himself. He fell off the edge and died. He, he took, he did that spell and he fell off the edge. I beat him. I'm the best. I sit at the bonfire near here. And for now, I'm done with the forest.
Uh, I hate this place, but let's get this over with. I grabbed the first bonfire and experienced my first real death of the run. Okay. That hit me, apparently. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, let's try that again. But this time, let's just make a beeline for the boss. This boss is really easy, but I can make it even easier if I just time it right. 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 Huh, <laughs> wrecked. Now I can walk up the stairs, get the next bonfire, and have a chat with Lysia. She'll move to Majula now. I open this chest to get the Ring of Binding, and I make the enemies kill themselves. Let's just all chill out for one set. He just killed himself. Can I make him kill himself? I want to make you kill yourself, too. I am the best. At this point, I experience my first roadblock in the game. No matter how slow or how fast I go, I can't seem to kill this dragon or even get to him. We're just walking down stairs. So we're going to have to skip this part and come back later. First, I'm going back to the Lost Bastille to grab the Silver Serpent Ring for the extra souls and fight another pursuer. And I could talk to Lucatiel for a bit. I don't know you. I take a trip into the sewer place and end up in No Man's Wharf. I take care of all the pirates in my way and talk to Lucatiel again. You haven't changed a bit. I ring a bell and the giant ship docks with the harbor. I run into the boat and I guess I'm blessed by the gods because this pirate missed the easiest swing on me in his life. What? 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 But let's carry on board the boat and run to the boss. I take care of him, or both of them, and climb the ladder to get the pyromancy flame and sail to the Lost Bastille. What he sees. What she sees. Up the stairs to the left, there's a bonfire. And further on, I walk into an alleyway to grab an Estus shard. It's time to fight the three ruined sentinels. It takes a few tries, one just getting to them and another in the boss fight itself. But just a couple attempts later, I take out all three sentinels and push forward. There's a ton of illusory doors down here, but I'm looking for the one with the ladder. If I climb it, I'll get the hush bell. And if I go through another, I'll find the bonfire. On the edge of this wall is the Bastille Key, which we'll need to finish the area, as well as using a branch on this guy for a bunch of spells and the bonfire he's blocking. But let's return to the Servant's Quarters bonfire and fight another Pursuer. We'll use a Lockstone to unlock a secret path and talk to the Gnome. He gives us the Drama Alert achievement, and I'll have to fight a bunch of his brothers to pull a lever that opens the boss area. If a boss was attrition, this would be the definition, as it took me 10 minutes to kill all the gargoyles. I head back and I head down the elevator and cross the bridge to fight the first Primal boss. He goes down without a hitch, and I light the Primal bonfire. That's one down, three to go. Okay, let's start off with a bit of backtracking. I went back to Hyde's Tower and killed that dragon I was having trouble with, and lowered the drawbridge that leads to a boss gate. I get to fight Orenstein, pretty cool, and he dies, pretty cool. <laughs> now I can go back to Majula, and Lysia is gonna open the way to the Huntsman's Cops. There's a broken bridge that has a token of fidelity on it, and if I give it to this guy, he'll let me join his covenant. Another achievement down. Back in the Cops, there's a little hovel along the path with a knight inside. He's easy to backstab, and I get the Soul Spear. There's another house, just further, that has a lever to pull, and it lowers this bridge so I can continue. There's a bonfire in this hut, but the door is locked, so we'll have to find a key. I get invaded by a dude that has a name, but he's no trouble, and I grab the key I needed. I can return now, and apparently there was someone in here. I just wanted the bonfire, but he repairs me in the ancient art of fist pump, and I'm filled with determination to fight the next boss, the Skeleton Lords. I can slash my way through the large amount of enemies, which leads to the next area, the Harvest Valley. Are you a traveler? No. This is Chloanne. She sells a bunch of rocks, but really we need to keep talking to her so she moves to Majula. There's a few fire ladies that nearly kill me, but they don't because I'm epic. And I'll grab the second bonfire. On this corpse, there's a chameleon sorcery. And no, I didn't die. Shut up, but... So something that I never noticed about this game... Yeah, that's interesting. The skybox completely changes. Anyways, if we take the path to the left, we can join the heirs of the Sun Covenant. Praise the sun and head back into the slime sewer to talk to our good friend, Lucatail. Still on the road. No, that's the covetous demon dead. I'll run to the next bonfire and torch this metal part of the windmill to light it on fire. And apparently it lowers the acid in this boss fight. Nothing too important to report here. Let's just take this elevator. Uh, we must be going somewhere pretty fucking high because this is taking forever. Oh, no. We're in the Iron Keep. Fuck yeah. I mean, do you even care what I have to say about this place? It just sucks. Everything sucks. I'm getting invaded and it sucks. And I'll talk to this guy who won't do anything. And I died and it sucks. And now I'm getting invaded again and it sucks. And he doesn't know what stairs are. And who the fuck is this guy? I die and die and die and die. But finally, with a summon to kill a smelter demon, I'm done with the Iron Keep. At least the first part. This is Laddersmith Gilligan, who, believe it or not, is actually useful for his gesture. And remember that cartographer? Now he's in the basement. 
Isn't that great? He loves that fire coming out of the floor. Isn't this game full of amazing characters? Okay, let's go back to the Iron Keep. If you go through this door on the left, there's a ladder, and we're gonna climb it. There's a few enemies and some gnomes, but just ring the bell, kill the white men, open the chest, and grab the Immolation Pyromancy. And right, Iron Keep. No more distractions. Also, don't do what I did, which was check every part of this area. There's very little we can do here right now, except die. Like, don't pull the lever. Don't take out the archer. Don't climb the ladders in the back. <laughs> don't die now. Don't open the chest. Don't kill the boy. And don't climb the ladder. Just go through the area as normal. Yeah. Did you know there was a ladder here? I didn't. At least to a bonfire and a lever that stops all the fire breathing. But now we can kill the boss of the melted cheese lake. Who's stuck. Uh. Okay, make sure he doesn't get stuck. Dodge him and kill him. I blocked him, so it didn't kill me. Can you believe we're halfway done? And I'm just now starting to lose my sanity. All right, Gilligan, I need some ladders. Three, in fact, and you're going to charge me a shit ton for them? Ugh, fine, I really don't have a choice. It's time to go down this hole in Majula. And if I take off all my clothes, I'll be able to survive the fall or not. Okay, let's make sure to do this properly. I'm going to slide down the medium length ladder, make a giant jump to the next platform, and make another jump onto the sand ledge. I made it down. Now, what armor was I wearing again? Man, this place is creepy. There's a bunch of fucking rats. You're not gonna get me this time, you bunch of rats. I just want this whisper of despair. Well, it's time to fight the boss. I wonder what it could be. Oh, rat god, no! That is the vanguard. He's walking into the gate. There you go, did I win? Can't believe I died to him the first time. There's Rat Covenant, by the way, and that's my whatever fucking achievement at this point. There's an Ash Knuckle Ring and a Great Heal here. And please, for the love of God, don't do what I'm doing here. Seriously, I didn't realize until this point that if you break a chest with your melee weapon, whatever item is inside, it gets turned into rubbish. And since I need the item in this chest for an achievement, I had to use a bonfire aesthetic to reset the area so you get the item. Fuck this up before, so... Back. Hey, welcome to the gutter. It's pitch black and probably looks really awful on YouTube, so let's make this fast. I got lost pretty quickly, and the guide I'm using is not helping at all. I'm looking for this bridge parallel to the fog gate. If you go through it and break this wall, there's a hidden bonfire to rest at. There are so many freaking ladders, but through trial and error, I make it to the bottom and use a bomb on these pots. Now, at the lowest point, we've reached the Black Gulch. You like poison areas? How about a hundred statues that all shoot poison at you? And the only way to avoid it is to... Thankfully, there's a bonfire further up, so unstone the hollow on the right, and there it is. There's a few ledges we need to fall down to find some hidden caves. One of them is pretty close to the first bonfire. Oh, you. <laughs> yeah, I love you too, babe. The other ledge is close to the second bonfire, and what's that in the darkness? <laughs> just kidding. It's just two giants. Killed them both, and the last one alive drops a forgotten key. Now you can drop down the same ledge and open the large stone door. Oh, Talk to the old man in the chair, and don't worry about him, because it's time to fight the next boss. The rot. He's the one that's making these fucking statues? You fucking piece of shit. I fucking hate this area and so does everyone else. And I feel nothing as I slowly cut up your body in the little bite sized pieces. If you get everyone in the jewel like that one HBO show, you need a fucking touch grass. Okay. Okay. I'm good. That's the um, third problem of Bonfire. And um, we just got one more to go. There's an alcove near things betwixt. And I can unstone this woman, but she's feeling kind of naked. So I'll give her some clothes, and that's another achievement. Now that I cleared the path, let's go back and talk to Jugo. Or is it Hugo? Welcome to Shaded Woods, full of fucking ew. But more importantly, the fork bonfire. There's three different paths to take, but the first one is full of fog. But like a maze, just hug the left wall, and there's a talking head on top of this rubble. Leave me be. I'm not gonna help him. Don't be ridiculous. I'll just talk to him and take his helmet. Oh, bitch, thanks for the achievement. Just keep hugging the left wall and grab the bonfire. You see this random lion man? He's very important to use a branch on. And when you kill him, he drops a fang key, which is going to open a very important door. But for now, let's go into the building on the left and talk to the scorpion man. My name was Tark. Who wants us to kill the scorpion the woman? Roll through this pot and what the fuck? Oh, hey, it's the important door. This is Ornifex, who I makes boss weapons, but I don't care. I just want spells. Speaking of which, I'm going to unlock this chest to get the repair spell. And if I continue, what the fuck? Uh, hey, it's the old man. Yeah. yeah, that's great, buddy. I just want the spell. Well, we're done with this area, so let's fight the boss. So, uh, what you want to do is you want to avoid her lava, because it does a lot of damage. Uh, wait a minute. <coughs> Sorry. This is Nadj... Nad... Nadjka. Uh, just kill her. Doors of Pharos. Only the most premium of Dark Souls content. And I can't even skip it. What? I'm getting invaded. Fuck you. 
Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Just walk around these guys until you get to the next bonfire and kill Sif, but leprosy. Now that that's done, I can leave this door for second place to the Bright Stone Cove Seldora. There's boulders and people and spiders. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Wait, this is a boss? It's just a bunch of hollows. Okay, bonfire. Right. There's a bunch of spiders all over the place, but it's okay. I definitely don't have a fear of spiders. Oh, why are you living with them? This place is honestly gank city. You're probably gonna kill more spiders here than you ever will in real life. But do we give up? No, we just complain. Ew, 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 ew. Go away! Freya's head is just here. That's so gross. And fuck this dude can take his key too. Okay, that's the fourth primal bonfire. Uh. This is Aldia. What's the story about him? Well, that's a great question. Welcome to Drang Lake. For Dark Souls fans, this looks all too familiar. There's a g g g g g g ghost that has a gesture. Wait, I can buy shit from you? You're a ghost! But we made it to the end of our journey, and made it to Drang Lake. Now it's time to confront the king and find a cure to the curse. He's gone. The king's gone. Okay, I guess we're not done. We gotta find the king. Well, let's start with the door on the right here, and grab the bonfire. Oh, this looks ominous. So the only way to open these doors is with a soul. So we'll have to kill someone next to them. Now, I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking for. Whoa! Well, that was unexpected. At least there's a bonfire down here, and hey, it's the old man again. And since I found him three times, I can join his covenant. I really hope he doesn't have a task for me. That's really fucking annoying to do. Well, I'm done here for now, so let's go back to the first bonfire and take the door on the right. And let's make sure to pick up this frozen flower. And make our way to the outside of the castle. Well, 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 look who it isn't. It's not the king, but Nishandra, the queen of Drain Lake. She tells us to find King Vendrick, but won't tell us where. So thanks for the advice. There's a boss fight right after. The Dragon Rider. But two of them. Well, who goes back sitting down as always? I'll climb the ladder and kill a man here for the soul basin. And kill a horse. On the right side of this area is Firestorm. Now I can go back, ride this elevator, which takes forever. And what the fuck is that? Is this really necessary? Ever heard of a padlock? Well, I can't open it right now, so let's loot the chest and go back down the elevator. So, as I said before, I'm not playing this online, which comes with its upsides and downsides, because one of his moves is to actually summon a real player to fight in the boss fight, which is pretty cool, but since I'm not doing that, it's pretty much just another easy boss. Now, don't miss the chest on the side here for Soul Bolt. And to yet another elevator that takes us to the Shrine of Amana. This fucking place. So I started this project on the 19th of January, and this area nearly ended it. I didn't even touch the game for a whole month because I just didn't want to play here. And believe me when I say I cut this footage down. There's about two hours of me just dying over and over, dodging all these fucking spells and walking so slow because all the water and these hidden chests that have spells I need to 100%. As if it wasn't bad enough, there's these mushroom bugs that release this orange gas. Do not sand in it for any amount of time or else it'll break your shit and you have to spend a bunch of souls repairing your equipment every time. And there's more spellcasters and an invasion to culminate in a boss fight that is so lackluster. Anyway, bonfire door. Are you ready for some more? Aldi is back to drop some lore on us. Uh, what did he say? Um, the guard to the door forgot his sword, so I have to kill him to get through. Inside this vault, I'm told to halt because this fucking guy in blue wants to be edgy. So I won't produce any light for him, and thanks for the gesture. There's nothing too crazy about this place. Some stones you gotta hit, more shield guards to hit, and a boss here to hit. This is the true guard here, and a great story. He's protecting King Vendrick from not just us, but from everyone. Because without King Vendrick, no one can link the fire to remove the dark sign curse, to die again. Everyone here is just an obstacle on our way. He falls to my sword, and here he is. The great King Vendrick, hollowed and naked. His ring is on the pile of clothes. We don't have to fight him. We can leave now, link the fire, and let him die naturally. Die human. Or we can go back to Majula and level up my sword to get this achievement, then to Shaded Woods, equip the King's Ring, and open these large black doors. Welcome to Aldia's Keep, full of a dragon skeleton, a spell and big frozen boys, a very useful bonfire that's hidden behind an illusory door, as well as another spell on the fucking orange goo that breaks my shit. Let's keep going. And whoa, what's with the jump scare? That was really scary. I wasn't expecting it. Whoa, there's another dragon, but this time it's a boss. He's real easy if he's on the ground, but not so much if he doesn't stop flying. And guess what? Another elevator to where else but the Dragon Airy. So in the initial release of this game, this whole area is fighting dragons and ziplining around. But in my version, Scholar of the First Sin just drops this ladder down and I don't gotta go through it. Isn't that awesome? Okay, gotta admit, this is this is cool if it was like a cutscene. Actually, now that I think about it, is there a bonfire like literally up here? If not, then it's fucking awful. Hello. 
Wait, am I just dead? I was just about to fucking praise you, dude. Literally was about to praise the game. And it oh, fuck off, Aldia. This place is all about a test. Am I worthy of the dragons? I have a few tests of strength in the enemies, so I've earned an audience with the dragon. And earn the Ashen Mist Heart, which allows us to enter one's memories. I also need to detour, grab this egg, and spell on this edge. Then I can go back to the Forest of Giants, and enter the memory of Oro. But there's nothing too interesting here, just loot the giant and leave. Next is the memory of Jaya, where we can fight a giant lord similar to the first boss in the run. Finally is the memory of Vammer, and if you're not paying attention, you might miss this guy on the ground, who drops some lore and gives us an achievement and a gesture. But other than that, you can just run through the level. I also want to go back to the Freya boss room and enter the memory of the dragon there. Oh man, it's so cool. I skipped the boss fight in the Huntsman Cops. It's a little gimmicky, hiding these little outcoves when the chariot runs past, then at the end pull the lever to stop it. Once the horse is dead, we can climb some stairs and talk to this lady, who just loves blood oh so much. I want to hear what you really think. You want more than you want to be drenched in oh just say. But more importantly, it's time to kill Vendrick. And all those giant souls we've collected make him that much weaker. A few close calls, and just as Nishandra wanted, we killed the Hollowed King. But we can also enter his memories. Just a broken man. We didn't come here to defeat Vendrick. He gave up long before we even arrived. There's nothing left but to put Nishandra to rest. First, we must gain access to the throne, but the Watcher and Defender stand in our way. I've come way too far. Nothing's too strong to stand in my way. I will link this fire. But Nishandra is not what she seemed. The human on the throne was a mirage. And with our help, this abomination of the abyss has access to the flame that we so desperately want to rekindle. Like all boss fights, we enter them through the fog gate. But this time, we're the boss. We stand in the way of our goals. And if we die here, then Nishandra gets the throne. All the fighting and all the bloodshed would be for nothing. We'll all go hollow. The world will be as dark as the abyss she was born from. But just as every hostile creature in the land of Dran Lake, she too falls from the swing of my blade. You... Conqueror of adversities. Give us your answer. Aldia, scholar of the first sin, brother to Vendrick. He knows the truth about the first flame, the first sin. Gwyn, so very long ago, used his own soul to keep this age of fire going. But so are you, trapped in this ever-growing cycle of rekindling. What is the point? Like the four seasons of nature, the world revolves the same way. The fire burns, the dark sign returns. The fire is linked, then the dark sign repeats. Aldia is the final test. His death, the final swing, a final boss, and one final task. The throne of want is ours, and from here we burn, lighting the flame once again, putting an end to the curse of man, curse of immortality. Is it over? The end of a journey? No. I still have a job to do. I still have achievements to get. I still have to... I... Uh... I can't skip. Hello? Game? It's unskippable. Great. Now I just have to sit here. <laughs> Original Dark Souls 2. What? Now I have to watch the credits for the original game? I'm not even playing it! Oh, for fuck's sake... <laughs> Huh? Huh? I'm awake. So Dark Souls 2 is very special as it's the only game in the series that requires you to play the DLCs in order to 100%. The first DLC requires the Dragon Talon, so we need to grab that first. And back to the Gulch to enter Shulva's Sanctum City. There's a dragon, but thankfully I won't have to kill him. So the whole gimmick in this area are these pillars, and if you hit them, then these platforms will move up and down depending. And there's one hidden behind these red-eyed statues that unlocks a secret area, with a hex on the dead body. Towards this bridge, the dragon shows up again, and on the side is another spell. We can enter this building, and these circular doors have pressure plates we have to hit in order for them to turn. Further on, I reached my lowest point as I got invaded. Uh-oh. What the fuck? You gotta watch out for him throwing that. Oh, well, yeah, I have life gems, so nice try. I have life gem, he can't hurt me. <laughs> Thanks. Miguel, Miguel, wait. That's it, whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get you that good. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say it that nasally either. Hey, Miguel, don't jump. Let me talk to you. I have life jam, take care of me. Why? You made me laugh and I hit it the punch. <laughs> I'm 
Wait, hey, this is what I needed. Hey, let's go. I can leave. <laughs> Look at the fucking dragon guy. I'm dragging these nuts uh -huh. across your face. Man, you got the whole squad laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Dude, it's, it's funny when it happens to someone else. <laughs> Ouch. Anyways, that petrified egg I grabbed can be given to the Mage Royal in the Iron Keep for the Dragon Remnants Covenant. Now it's time to go back to the Forest of Giants for the Heavy Iron Key, which is a lot harder than it seems. I can go back to the Iron King Bonfire and enter the second DLC. This one we have to completely go through. I'll take these smelter wedges and you can use them on these totems to remove them. But for now I'm going to save this one for later. This whole area is just one big tower, so slowly make your way down. And I'll use one wedge on this totem instead. There's 11 in total, and I only have 6 wedges currently, so I'll have to find the rest of them as well as the totems. A dance of fire on the body? Doors, bonfires, more doors, ladders galore. I'm as low as I can go, but I have no iron scepter in my inventory. It's in this tower, so walk along the chain, down the ladder, and it's surrounded by exploding men. Now teleport back, and inserting the scepter turns this tower into a working elevator, and at the very bottom is our first boss. Fume Knight, as he's known, and for Dark Souls fans, well celebrated. This is why I saved the wedges. There's four totems here, and each one will heal Fume Knight, and make the boss way harder. Thankfully, there's a bonfire right next to him, so the boss runs super quick. I'm just gonna skip every time I died, and believe me, I died a lot during this DLC. I feel like if I criticize Fume Knight at all, I'm just gonna get a swarm of hate comments for this video. So I have no opinions at all. With the knight dead, it's time to grab all the smelter wedges, as well as the tower key. Now it's just about going from place to place, removing these idols. And instead, at the very top of this tower is the infamous Sir Alon. What's so bad about this fight? Well, there's a super long boss run full of annoying ass knights and fire breathing lizards, but more importantly. No, it's the fucking teleport move! Fuck this lunge. I honestly don't even know how to counter him, especially if that lunge connects with you. Well, teleports you, it buffs him. But if you summon AIs to help you, that lunge will connect, but won't give that same buff. Also, don't feel too bad if you're dying here, because I've cut down about four hours across these two bosses. So, Sir Alon dead, and no more bosses to fight. I'll be sure to find every idol and use a wedge on them. With mild success. All 12 of these souls acquired, I obtained the true soul of Nadalia. And just one more DLC left. You... I really wish I could. But seriously, people rate this DLC very highly, but there's not much to do in terms of achievements. Pull this lever, collect the Eye of the Priestess. With the Eye, this ladder is now visible, and a miracle up here, a hex up here, and a spell unlocked from the lever. The DLCs are done, and all that's left is the long grind of farming. Since I'm playing this purely offline, the trade-off I have is Covenant items. It's not as bad as Dark Souls 3, but it's still a chore, and I'm going to have to save that until way later. With everything done, I can talk to the Laddersmith and the Cartographer for two different achievements. Back to Hyde's Tower, I need this man's Jester, and I might as well buy his Miracles. Talking to Tark again, I can learn his Jester, and that's another achievement. I'm also going to use one of my Soul Vessels to respect my character. This won't be the last time, but this is my build from here on out. Well, it's time for Megamation's Soul Farming Showcase! First, I kill this knight up here, use a Fire Road Pyromancy to knock him into the lava, then plunge this last knight, climb the ladder, and repeat. Like a million fucking times, because we need a million souls. You see all straight spells here? We need to buy every single one. So, hours and hours later, I need to go back to the wharf and talk to the sorcerer here. He should arrive in the Jula, and just like that, that's another achievement. In the Huntsman Cops, Falcon is here staring at a wall, and we need to buy all of his hexes. As well as Lysia here, I need to buy all of her miracles. The old man in the chair has hexes to buy, and so does the newly arrived sorcerer. Rosabeth here has some pyromancies, and the stone bearer from the valley has some. Majorel has some, Cromwell here does too, and a few from the bird lady. And I know I'm buying some dupes here, but I'm just playing it safe. I also need to climb this ladder in the crypt, and in the chest is the crushed eyed orb. An item that stirs in the presence of traitors. And who else but Lysia is one such traitor, who fucking heals infinitely. She healed so many times during this fight, I broke my sword yes. on the last swing. But that's another required miracle. In the Spider-topia, there's a chest here with great fireball. In Louisiana, there's fire tempest in this chest. In literal and metaphorical hell, there's chaos storm. And going back to the memory of Oro, Hugo gives me his equipment. In the Basile, there's a blacksmith, and I need to buy a bunch of stuff from him in order for him to give me his equipment. Do you remember that guy in the chair? Well, he has a very special covenant. The three locations he's found at are portals to the Abyss areas, and what makes it special are these phantoms. You have to kill all of them in order to proceed. There's also these braziers you have to light, and then you fall into this dark pit, and that's the level done. But if you die, you have to spend a human effigy every time you want to retry. 
It's a fucking pain. And after all three are complete, you are rewarded with a boss fight. It's a pretty fun boss fight, all things considered. But if you die, you also have to complete one of the levels all over again just to attempt another. And if you die again, kill everyone again, go down the elevator again, kill the guy down here again, and then attempt again. It wasn't until now I realized how amazing having sorcery is in this game. And if I was so unfortunate to have to do this all over again, I would have been using magic from the very start. Yes. And that's one of three covenants done. Welcome to the Bellkeeper's Covenant. This grind has the opportunity to be the worst grind in the game or the fastest. If you're playing this online, all you need to do is invade and kill 30 people to get the hidden weapon spell, which is what I'm going for. But since I'm a pussy and offline mode, I have to climb this ladder and kill all the gnomes as well as this red phantom. Back to the bonfire and repeat. The only catch is he doesn't always respawn. And that's where playing this on Steam is a massive advantage. You see, every time this phantom spawns, it needs to use some memory to load him in from your storage into the game. So what's the plan? Open Task Manager, and every time your memory spikes, that's when he loads in and you can kill him. This drops down my grind from what could have been hours to roughly 40 minutes. Back in Majula, I want to buy this ladder mini from Gilligan and talk to this man in Aldi's keep. He wants me to kill a bunch of people in Majula, but I don't wanna, so let's try and trick him. I already got the ladder mini. The next is Falcon, who I can trick with a lot of intellect and faith. He gives me a sunset staff, and now I can set my stats back. Back to Aldi's keep, he compliments me with my lying skills, but now he wants me to kill the fire keeper. And to prove it, I need her aged feather, but she already gave it to me. So that's this man's quest over. Just one last hex to buy from Strayed, and I can complete Lucatiel's quest line. How goes your journey? I know not what you, but I pray. Or, wait, what? Maybe I have to kill her? Oh, Ugh, fuck. Dear. I fucked up. I need her achievement, but I failed her quest. There's nothing left. So it's time to enter New Game Plus. So in New Game Plus, there's a bunch of new enemies, but nothing interesting that's changed. So to avoid sounding like a broken record, let's rapid fire everything I did. I walked to Majula, then the Forest of Giants, killed the last giant, killed the Pursuer, flew to the Wasp of Steel, talked to Lucatiel again, grabbed the key next to her, then to Hyde's Tower, killed the Dragon Rider, walked to No Man's Wharf, talked to Lucatiel here too, rang the bell, summoned Lucatiel, killed the Fluxile Sentry, back to the Basile, entered this blocked off area, used a lock stone here, then up this elevator and down this elevator, summoned Lucatiel again, killed the last sinner, moved to the fucking circle thing, Huntsman Cops, killed the Skeleton Lords, Harvest Valley, Kill the covetous demon into the sewer and talk to Lucatiel. Burn the windmill. Mitha's dead to Iron Keep. Summon Lucatiel. Kill the smelter demon. Kill the Iron King. Bought the expensive ladder. Landed on this ledge above the real ledge. I entered the gutter, the black gulch, fell down here, talked to Lucatiel, summoned her, killed the rotten, freed the lady from stone, entered the fog, talked to Tark, killed Quaylag, sold Dora, dead congregation, I got invaded by a spirit who didn't understand that he was dying on the spikes he was standing in, giant spider, freed straight, bought my final hex and some other spells, shaded woods to drain lake, opened this doors, Nishander's a human again, two dragon riders, ah ah ah, up the elevator, grab the key, looking glass knight, down the elevator, trying to go fuck yourself, no seriously, go fuck yourself, dead fog, down the elevator, undead crypt, dead Velstad, king's ring, Aldia's keep, Lucatiel's questline, complete dragon guardian dragon airy dragging these nuts across your face big dragon what's with all these fucking enemies giant lord dead throne of want throne duo dead nishandra dead all right so it's time to complete the last covenant i'm going to backtrack and kill the ruined sentinels grab this bastille key kill the pursuer open the lock stone just as before so i can kill the gargoyles all over again this time they drop the upgraded gold serpent ring which is going to boost my item discovery so this is the grind fight these two soldiers then the one on his own then the final two over and over until you get 30 sunlight medals Let's go! Once you've gotten them all, now you can offer them to the altar. Oh, don't tell me I have to do it one at a time. One at a time. That's all the covenants done. Uh, but it ain't fucking over to New Game Plus Plus. Uh, the last giant, the pursuer, the dragon rider, the flexile sentry, the lost sinner, the skeleton lords, the covetous demon, Mitha, the smelter demon, the old iron king, the rotten Najka, the congregation, and the duke steer Freya. All that's left is to make it to Drang Lake Castle and talk to this ghost. He sells the last few spells I need to 100% Dark Souls 2. Wrath of the Gods, Bountiful Sunlight, Great Chaos Fireball, and the Dark Soul Achievement. Gone so soon. Be safe on your travels. Thank you so much for watching this all the way through. I've never made a video like this, and this is the first time I've ever scripted a video. So for the spirit of it, all of this is off the cuff. If you like this video, then go ahead and like it, and maybe share it around if you can. And if you haven't already, subscribe, because I'll probably be making another video in the coming weeks here. But the real question here is, was this worth it? Fuck no!